The great Hakeem Abuti says, if we refuse to teach our children culture and history, we might as well get a 45 and put it to their head. ABC, VSOP, 123, Barney, Lil Wayne, Cars, Clothes, A Measuring Pot, do it now. See, do it now. See, give them everything they want and never what they need. See, always let them watch TV and never make them read. See, do it now. See, cover his little fingers in jewels. Draw dollar signs on his pampers. Place diamonds on his neck, di diamonds on his little neck. Applaud when he gets into fights. Fight anyone who tries to discipline him. Laugh when he curses. Blow blunt and cigarette smoke into her little lungs. Be proud when she dances to give him some head. Call him Lil Pimp, Lil Dog, Lil Hustler. Tell him he's a beast. Call him Hot Boy, Murder Boy, Baby Boy now. Tell him school is for suckers now. Teacher all the famous designer names now. Slap a caller out a name now. Elect a strip hole in a room now. Let her dive and dance for dollars now. Pour Cristal out on her now. Do it now. Do it now and get it over with. See, give them everything they want and never what they need. See, always let them watch TV and never make them read. See, do it now. See, do it now. Tell him he's just like his no good daddy. Constantly remind him he's nothing. Color his room gray. Make it a five by eight. Place prison bars on his playpen. Let his PJs be colored county orange. Do gang signs in front of him. Teach him how to stare hard. Tell him to stay in beef. Show him how to hold a Glock. Teach him the words detention, commissary, and thug. Let him witness you slap his mother. Let him practice walking out on his children. Get his neck tattooed on his eighth birthday. Tell him to pop his collar and pimp these bras because it's hard out here for a pimp. Show him how to hang on a block now. Give him a measuring pot now. Give him gold fronts now. Teach him how to blow blunts now. Teach him how to stunt now. Tell him to go right the whip now. Tell him to go dumb now. Do it now and get it over with. See, give him everything they want and never what they need. See, always let him watch TV and never make him read. So do it now. See, show her the worst images of black manhood. Limit her vision. Tell her to get her eagle on. Tell her to get a soldier. Let her go to sleep to the whisper song. Break her down. Yell at her. Tell her move trick. Get out the way. Get out the way. Tell her to trust no black woman around her man. Tell her she's a bad chick. A bad chick. Let her dance to I'm in love with a stripper. Never talk about Big Mama. Coretti Scott King. Betty Shabazz. Never use the word wife. Beautiful, intelligent, or education. Teach her how to pose for magazines. Pierce her tongue while she young. Dress her in tight clothes. Call her baby mama. Teach her how to trick now. Call her bust down now. Call her blockhead now. Call her jump down now. Call her little mama now. See, do it now and get it over with. See, give them everything they want and never what they need. Always let them watch TV and never make them read. So, place your order for a hundred white tees. Get the coffin ready. Pick out your black suit. Sign them up for the special ed classes. Never pray. Never mention God. Do it now. Do it now. Get it out the way and save them the trouble. Oh. oh. Yeah, well, we got we to stop that. I mean, so the question is, uh, you know, you know how, do we, how do we stop that? You know, I mean, it's happening, and we know it's happening. And so the question for us is not, and not for us here, mm -hmm. it's for our community. Um, um, because this is this is one of the things that I uh, give you a kind of uh, uh, kind of an update of an article that I'm writing now on um, the black culture. Mm -hmm. And see, the black culture is a very creative culture, a very uh, powerful, powerful culture, in spite of what we see happening today. So, how do we take how do we take uh, the values that we hold and we know is the right way? How do we? How do we? How do we now compensate for some this very unstable environments we have some of our children in that are mm -hmm. experiencing these kind of things on a daily basis? So how do we do it? I mean, how do we? How do we? How do we go and save those babies? Because uh, if we don't do it, they won't be saved. Well, uh, one thing, for instance, the calendar this year Muhib created is called This Is What It Looks Like. 
All the images on there are to show this is what it looks like. We believe one is imagery. Like I've always said, a home should be, I heard a, a young lady, at, I went to see Dr. Juwanza Kanjufu the other night. Uh, uh, great session out there. There was a lady who spoke that uh, the first teacher before her child got to school were her and her husband. Way before he got to kindergarten. By the time he got to kindergarten, by the time he got to first grade, he was already apt with reading, education, etc. Because the images at home, the, the language as you spoke, you know, when my niece was born, one of the first things I did, the first word I ever taught my niece was intelligent. Phonetically, I made her say intelligent, and I kept those words in front of her. Another thing is, as we spoke uh, within that classroom in there, is not only do we show them the images, but going back and restoring their pride with the Afrocentric learning, like the rites of passage program. In the hood all day, there are rites of passage, that's just the wrong rites of passage. If you could take those, those rites and flip them over, uh, it changes the way things are done. Introducing them like, in the beginning when I was teaching, we used to say, I go and I may. At first it was funny, but as the kids picked up and they seen it, it became entrenched in their language. So the minute we walked in the door, uh, if somebody was yelling, I didn't have to say I go. They start picking up saying I go and I may. Uh, images of us as black men, I think it's really important, like we had community day yesterday, to come in the building, to come in the building and let them see the everyday person. Sometimes we say we need to bring a doctor, a lawyer, uh, uh, people of uh, uh, prestige in there, but I think sometimes they just need to see a basic everyday person, the dude to get up and go to work. That's what we saw in our communities, restoring the pride again. The events and our conversations, every piece we can, it needs to show who we are. And, uh, uh, and, and as far as with parents, we've been teaching, we've been doing classes now with parents just as much as we've been doing with young people. We've been doing as many classes with parents as we've been doing with young people. So it's not just the thing where we go in there and say, all right, you guys go. We hit them with some things, but some schools have, we've had the pleasure of some teachers and principals having us come in after school and do sessions, the same six-week session, conflict resolution session we would do with the students, we're getting to do with parents. Uh, as you stated again, making a almost like a hub, like I'm a firm believer in your home should look like a mini learning institution. When you walk in the door, it should look just like what you, when, when, I love when my grandson comes over and they count the books on the shelf. I've played a game, tell me how many books I got. And they take pride in like counting, it's a race, who got how many books? Because I want them to understand, and reading also, when you spoke about the cortex, they say the most important time for any child to learn is from zero to three. Oh, sure. The most important time for a child to learn is from zero to three. What they get at zero to three can help, and what they don't get at zero to three can hurt. And I, and the last but not least, highlighting the great things that are being done in the community. Uh, again, when we uh, have sessions, uh, I went to the, uh, uh, which we all were at the uh, Black Male Summit, right? 500 black boys there, not one incident. Not one incident. Uh, and these young men, I went to some of the workshops where they were conducting the workshops and speaking and asking real questions and wanting some real answers. You know, one young man, I went in one where he said, man, look, everybody, they assumed that there was certain music that they all listened to. And the little dude in there was like, man, don't let us, you know, him and his crew, it was the consensus, we don't listen to that anyway. That's not us, you know, that's what they say, but that's not us. So we even have to change the, you know, sometimes the misconception that we have all young people are, are out here while and now. So I, if, if I, as I close, Raheem, I would say imagery, we need imagery, the rest restoration of pride, and more Afrocentric learning in the school, not just by us, I mean by, not just by us, but across the board, because that's the first way to get pride in. I, once I found out who I was, uh, while I was in school and just being me, Anton, it's a different story when I found, found out about African history. That changed my whole, I was gonna drop out of school my sophomore year, Mr. Crockett, my Afro history teacher, he died. I failed a number of classes. I remember him yanking me by the shirt, saying, boy, and he did say that, boy, you can fail a number of classes in this building, but how dare you fail the class of our people? Why don't you just walk out this door right now? And I remember just standing there. He, with him saying that to me made me think about it, but when I started studying who we are, that changed the game. So knowing who we are did a whole lot for me, and I think when we deal with young people and they know who they are and we can bring those messages to it will change the way they say it brings the self-love you spoke of early. So I think that, um, so we got some structural challenges. 
uh, and I like to put it in the context of solutions. Um, so one, uh, if we look at, and by the way, um, um, many people don't kind of equate this, but I, I have fundamentally equated what you're describing to poverty, all right? So um, we're going to deal with the issue of poverty. Mm -hmm. In order for us to deal with the issue of poverty, we got some fundamental issues we got to deal with. Yes, one, sir. we have to restore, as you just said, pride in the black community. So the question would be for us to do that is organizing all of our cultural arts organizations who are involved in the delivery of raising that pride. Or, and, and there are a lot of their things. So uh, um, structurally, we have to be able to do that. Not all, but at least a good portion. And mm -hmm. Milwaukee is small enough that you could maybe even get to all. Mm -hmm. um, um, the the uh, arch groups, the museum, we've been working now with the... Uh, the Black Holocaust Museum, right? Uh, the African World Festival, uh, the uh, museum on um, twenty seventh uh, Wisconsin Black Historical and, and Society, right? And so, all of those organizations, we need to put a table where they're sitting around the table, and the question would be, how do they organize, and how do they create a a, a simplified message, um, so that we can now get it out to the mass community? And then, second, is how do we now find out what they are all doing so that we can promote you know, some of the things that you're doing and others are doing. There's good things happening but it ain't getting traction. Mm -hmm. Alright, so that we can start to, like, you know, you have your uh, gas tank. The gas tank right now for Black Pride is almost all empty. Mm -hmm. We gotta fill it back up. Mm -hmm. And so how do we fill it up? We gotta fill it up with these organizations. We gotta mm -hmm. get behind these organizations who are doing this. The next group that we got to organize is in addition to the public schools, but the charter schools. The, 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 at least the ones that have black children mm -hmm. there, significant numbers of black children. And, and so that's where we can sit at that table as well. Mm -hmm. we can, Universal can sit at that table because we'll, we'll be a part of that discussion because we have to infuse the curriculum with knowledge of who we are. That's right. And now, now, the funny problem is, or the challenge is that the adults in that space don't have confidence in that. Mm -mm. They don't even believe, that's how tricked they are. Mm -hmm. They've been tricked so bad that they don't even believe that, the because they said they made it, mm -hmm. but they don't even realize that they didn't even they make, didn't make it. it. Right. Because right. they still are fundamentally carrying the pain of our struggle. Oh, yeah. And one of the things that they have not been able to do is take the value of our culture and of, of who we are and put it into themselves they they've used terms like you know get out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. get out mm -hmm. ain't no such thing as getting out mm -hmm. you know we have to get in we got to dig in so so fundamentally that's where we're going to have the challenges but i think if we can pull together in 2015 uh, starting with those two groups the cultural organizations and the educating organizations as a start. Right. Let, let's see what we can do and having a discussion around how do we now begin to fill that tank back up mm -hmm. structurally. Right. Because it's just not enough. I don't see the, the mode of operation good enough, as good as you are and your partner, and, and maybe I am or others might be, it's not enough to change the dynamics that we're looking at. Right, right, right. We're going to have to team up. It's we're going to have to partner up, and we're going to have to aggregate our capacity, and we're going to have to build on our capacity. If we don't do that, I don't think we're going to be able to get to the, the, the unbelievable description of, of what's happening That's in right. a young person's life, boy and girl, who don't get the value of some of the precious uh, knowledge and information and encouragement um, that it should be standard standard for all children. We have a caller. Caller, you have a question or a comment? I do. How, how, how's the family doing over there? What's going on? What's going on? Who we speaking to? You, you, you know this, uh, Blue Hill. <laughs> what's going on, brother? This is Orlando. What up, love? Oh, you know what's going on, too. How, how's the family over there? I, I like what I've heard right now and also uh, to um, the host 
so we've met a couple different times. I'm with the, uh, the state party, Republican party, but I definitely want to say that besides that, as a man of color, a black man, I support anything that will uplift people, our kids, our boys in, uh, in particular, to understand the value of their lives and the value of what they have to our community. And so anywhere we can find a way to uh, enhance that education, to let them know that there's an alternative, I'm for that, and I know there are a lot of people who will support that initiative. So I extend that to the body, to the community, to let you know that we have people who are on that and will, will support anything that um, will move in that direction. Uh, it's unfortunate, though, that, um, you know, me and Malia go back way back middle school, you know, and um, we may have different faiths, but we have also we, what we share is a love for people and black people in particular. And yes, that's sir. something I will always respect and always love. So my, my, my quest and my request is this. How do we do this in a way that brings all people together? And in particular, black people. You know, I hear the charter school or education piece and, the, you know, the spiritual piece, and I'm with that. But if we don't get young people to understand this early on, and get, I mean, these young people were, I mean, they passed away at the age of like two and three and never have a chance to get back on track. How do we address that? Because my opinion, quite honestly, is that we need to have our earlier intervention. And I'll hang up and I'll listen or create dialogue right now. Well, the, 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 the very, uh, first of all, uh, thanks, Brother Orlando, for your comments. Um, um, uh, we have to, uh, fundamentally, we have to build the uh, table where we can come around and sit, I mean, you know, metaphorically a uh, table, meaning that we have to have a place where we can gather at and have these kind of discussions. Um, we've started a process in Philadelphia called the Philadelphia Community of Leaders where we would like to implement some aspect of that here in Milwaukee. And we've been meeting with a number of different people to have that kind of discussion. In fact, we had the, um, in the, um, was it the fall? Was it? We had the uh, State the, of Black uh, Oh, Milwaukee. the, um, the community conversations. Mm -hmm. Community conversations. Yes. Well, that's just the beginning, uh, Orlando, and, and I know you were there. Um, so here's, here's what has to happen. Uh, and um, this is also, when I talk about the paralysis that we have, our leadership has, our leadership is paralyzed because this is very basic stuff and we're unable to achieve it. So we have to have a table, a place where uh, the black cultural organizations can come to and sit around and organize and strategize. We have to have a table or a place where the black educators can come together and organize and strategize. We have to have a place where the social workers, those who are involved in the, uh, keeping our young boys and, and, and girls out of prison, those who are dealing with the children that are at risk, um, uh, whether they be high school students, whether they be uh, public students, those, those Organizations are around trying to fix the physical environment, um, restore housing and revitalize neighborhoods. Uh, those who are actually educators, those who are business people. You know, so what I'm basically saying is that all of those people have to come to a place mm -hmm. that doesn't exist right now. And in many people's minds that they have made excuse after excuse of why that can't happen. But it's really a paralysis. It's a fear of, that we have to get over. And so the goal over the next couple of months, uh, Orlando and everyone who else is listening to, is to create that platform where we can have that kind of conversation. We started the process with the community conversation that we had a couple months ago. We've had uh, several discussions uh, since then but we expect to have a structure of some sort um, to be able to discuss uh, openly uh, with the public uh, about how do we now organize our leadership and then how do we organize our community. Um, but it's not going to happen 
there is no people um, sitting outside of the county, the, the Milwaukee County line, ready to come in and save the community of Milwaukee, the black community of Milwaukee. There are no groups, there are no people. Unfortunately, when you look at the mirror, the, if we're going to be saved, we have to do the saving. SOS. And so structurally, that's what has to happen. So when I say, uh, for example, after listening to your, uh, what do you call it, poem? Mm -hmm. You call it a poem? Mm -hmm. Right, because I, I, I don't know what you guys it's are talking about. It's called a piece. You know, it's called a piece. It's spit. It's spit. It's spit. It's spit. Can you dig it? Give, give him some room. Give him some room. I told you give him some room. Give him some room. Uh, uh, when I hear your piece, I want to see. I want to see how we address it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so the only way, well not the only way, the, one of the ways I think we fail to, we got to get behind in numbers and in structure and, 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 and resources and in content behind this concept so that we can stop this. We can stop the bleeding. We can stop the hurt. I remember um, uh, Stevie Wonder's Love is in love, love is in need, need of love. Love, love is in need love of love. Now, come on, now, is that, now, now, love now, 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 see, I'm not, I'm I'm getting past your stuff. Oh, I'm, man, going, I'm <laughs> going, I'm going, I'm going back to my stuff now. Hey, right. Now, hey, you know that's what I mean? Joint too. Yeah, yeah. Yes, love, so y'all oh. share that one, huh? Yes, we do. <laughs> love and need of love. <laughs> We got Tom Cash today. You, Keon, you, we had, I think Keon didn't have that on you, the playlist recently. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? Love so love and the need of love. Need of love. love. Now Wonder. come on, man. Mm -hmm. So but who's going to give that love? We got to do it. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody going to do it. It's nobody going to do it. So, And the other thing that I say is that I am not going to accept. If you don't want to do it, then fine. Get the hell out the way. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't stop you, Quab, and I. That doesn't stop you and everybody here from doing it. Because the bottom line, if it's not done, we, we, we might as well just throw our hands up. And you might as well say, like you that's just finished, that's say, that's what that's was that last piece you said? Call you might as well go, go, you might as well right now. Up. That's right. That's right. No, All it right? Is. It is. It it is. is. Because the intervention strategies are getting now way out of control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We got too many. Uh, we was at a meeting the other day, and, and the brother was saying they had a job fair. Mm. And, and mm. the... And the Candidates that came out to the job fair was just it's just it's just unbelievable. It's not gonna happen. So we gotta get the right people on the right bus in the right seats. Mm -hmm. We are those right people. We might not be in the right we might we on the right bus. We're not being in the right seats right now. We gotta get them in the right seats. That's well, it. That's so it. the next couple months, that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be talking about structure. I am not sitting here, first of all, I'm not spending my time. And my wheels, I mean, just to be talking. Mm -hmm. No, I'm I'm in the trenches with you. I mean, we're building schools. We're we're trying to do some real estate development, some scale real estate development in the city. We're trying to restore the uh, uh, the Black Holocaust Museum back on on North Avenue. So needed. We're trying to work with other cultural organizations, and we're also trying to organize our community. So. And, and, and so what we have, universal, our capacity, is to deliver that capacity into this equation. But knowing that capacity is not the savior. The savior is all of us. Is what you bring to the table, what this group brings to the table, what that group brings to the table. And we infuse that into some, 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 uh, I'm, I'm writing this piece about the whole is greater than the sum of its part. And the concept is just look at the automobile. The parts, the carburetor, the 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 the, the batteries, the, the exhaust system, the, the 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 heating systems, the the engine, whatever, all those things are needed before you can get in that car and move. And the fuel, what is the fuel? The fuel is our history. The fuel is our excellence. The fuel is our culture. The fuel fuel is our history in this country and our ability to win. That's our fuel. So that's why we have to tell that story. That's right. That's right. We have to uplift that story. So we have to build that vehicle. We have to build the vehicle. If we're going to think it's going to carry us somewhere, where is the vehicle? We got to build it. That's right. That's right.
Yes. And structurally, that's what we've been avoiding some kind of way. I don't know why um, some of our most talented, I guess that's the question. Like Carter Woodson said, they educated, but what have they been educated to do? They've been educated to carry on, to assimilate a, an attitude that's anti-black, when they're black. That's assimilate a system that's destroying black people when they're black. They've been educated to do all these things with 25 years and 20 years of education, formal education. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones now who says, them, those. No, it's us. It's we. But they don't have that concept because they've been educated. They think they're a distinction. But they're not no distinction. Yes, they probably need to, yeah, they, I'm not I'm not of them. You know, I'm not of them. And, Are you kidding me? And we spoke that, you know, uh, and I, again, if I could jump in and just say this, Brother Ryan, as you still Please. stated, uh, it's, as you say, infusing it. Like, going to see Juwanza, in one week, you know, Juwanza Kanjufu was here. You know, at the Black Male Summit. You know, you had a leadership training, you know. At one time in the, in the late 90s, this that was a regular part of, of things. You know, you'd go somewhere and you'd see uh, Naheem Akbar was coming to speak, you know, or as a teacher at that time, every year you went to self-development classes. You know, that was it was infused in what we were doing. So somewhere along the line, it's not infused anymore. So when you say uh, Juwanta Kanjufu was here, a majority of the crowd that was there, there was not a lot of, it was a lot, it was educators there, but you would have thought, it would be flooded with ed educators. You would have thought it would have been flooded uh, with uh, people who want to get close, who de were dealing with our young people, who would want to, you know, find better ways and better techniques. It wasn't, but bringing in those type of acts. I remember when I moved here, I, I saw uh, on 27th, it was in the Holocaust. That, no, that's the, it's historical. Histor what sounds like Black historical? Black like historical. When I first moved, I went through the paper finding where was what at, you know, where could I find, and I just saw uh, I saw Andre Lee Ellis name and then I saw uh, a historical society is going to bring in this. That's why I would go to whatever uh, black culture group uh, artists they were bringing in. You know, they they brought in Haki Mahabuti. They brought, uh, uh, Ter I think Terry McMillan came. Uh, I saw Terry McMillan at the Reader's Choice Bookstore. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was so much that you could see. And I believe now what we're doing is, as you state, bringing the table back together uh, what's happening on King Drive, you know, what's happening on King Drive has the potential, and I do say the potential, to really be a major landmark in the city with black-owned places down there, uh, a coffee house down there, a place where we can meet and have those discussions. And and and, and last but not least, for young people to see it. I think it's a prideful thing oh, that young people walk fundamental. through and see that, wow, this is, you know, I took a young boy to coffee, makes you black. Well, he wasn't that young, he's maybe a 21. And he was like, man, I lived around this corner my whole life. I didn't know this existed. You know, it's like, it's right, 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 it's right, right, down right down the street. Corner. You know, it's right down the street. But at least he saw it. You know, and I, and it's just if you're saying we're going to infuse that, the first place they've always started was with art. They say you can tell a culture and a civilization by the art it produces. Look at what the art we're producing right now. If you want to call that art. Well, I think the thing that I, I think that I, I would like to say to 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 that is that. Uh, um, you know, to your point, you know, kids and children specifically don't really pay attention to much of what you say. They really pay attention to what you do. And, and what they see is evidence of the fact that, uh, you know, there's a disconnect. And they, they don't know how to, they don't know how to reconcile Rapid all that. And they, they're just struggling with all of that. I mean, it's just way too much for their minds to figure out well, what does all this mean? When well, all this is hurt is being coming at them in different ways. But here's what here's where here's where the challenge is for us as a community. And Tosha, you do this on on, on social media and marketing. We got to market our community. Exactly. We got to we got to overcome this thing here. We got to win in spite of the hand that we've been dealt. And that means we got to we got to address this in a sober way. And so that means basically. Who are our marketing people? And I've met and what's a couple. the message that we? Well, put out? well, the structurally, how do we even do it? But the the bottom, I met with a, a, a woman the other day, and she was talking about this campaign she created for her company. I said, can we create that campaign for our community? Mm -hmm. 
because that's what it is. And, 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 and I'm not going to go too far into it, but the bottom line is that the, the, the justification of maybe skirting around, so it ain't all picture perfect, but it's strategy. Mm -hmm. It's strategy. The same strategy they're using to define how we are consumers, how we spend, how we define what beauty looks like. You you said it in your in your so much in that in that spit. What did you call peace. it? Peace. peace. That peace. That peace. <laughs> and that peace you just did. Like, can you email me that piece? Yes. I mean, sir. I I need to yes, just see that on my wall. I need to see that on a regular day so it can encourage me to figure out ways to solutions how we can combat that. Because so we got the market, Tosha. Okay. We got the market and promote. We got to create a message. We got to create a message. We got to organize our 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 our, 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 our community <laughs> and figure out a way. How do we market and promote who we are, what we are, and 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 uh, and and, and the, the piece you describe about going to 27th Street, you conscious. We got to get more people conscious. We're not reading. So most people, the, the 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 biggest enemy to us is ignorance. We don't know nothing. So our teachers can't teach. They don't know what they can't teach. What they don't know, how they gonna teach the things they don't know. They don't know about our history. They don't know even Martin Luther King. They don't even know who Martin Luther King is. So we could talk about Martin Luther King, but let's study, let's really study Martin Luther King. So we gotta create study groups. We gotta restore, we got work to do. The promise that we see in our minds is not gonna come because we're good people. It's going to come because we're serious and we're committed. So if you're not serious and committed, that's fine. You keep on doing what you're doing. But let us attract the people who are serious and committed. And I, I believe in my mind, I believe in my heart and my soul that we can get this thing done. We can, we can change some things and make it better for the next generation. But we're going to have to draw a line in the sand. Okay, we're going to draw a line in the sand on the show right now. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk more about what that looks like, organizing. We're going to talk about coming together. And we're going to talk about how this uh, collaboration came about and part seven of the Black Male, a targeted group. I hope you've been following this. No, they're not reading. <laughs> you know what I hear? Here's what I hear. Oh, you know what? I haven't even read the, the Courier. Or, okay, well, it's not in the Courier. It's in the Times. Oh, no, I haven't even read the Times. Oh, it's in the community. Oh, oh, it's in the community. Oh, you know. Uh, I, do you read any black newspapers? <laughs> no. That's the problem. So no, then that, we that, send that, it to so the we, internet. The, the link. We no, but we, this is what we got to do. We got to market and promote restoring back our ability to read our own newspapers yes, yes. we got to get our people we can't say that it is what it is we got to fix it we got to get our black people who don't even listen i i talked to a person the other day and i says well yeah well i'm on the radio on friday he says yo well i said he said what say i said uh, i said um uh 860 says uh, 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 w, w, w what he didn't even know what it was he didn't know the calling we got to fix that i knew right there we got a problem it's next we got to fix the problem we got to get black people going back to looking as their source of information like me coming from black media mm. that's what we got so that's another mm. challenge we have to do and guess what? We're not going to get there. We're not going to do none of these things if we don't fix that. Okay. You heard the instructions. We will be back. We're going to fix it all within the next... Okay, well, we're not going to fix it all within the next uh, segment, but we're going to come back. We're going to talk about it. You are listening to Universally Speaking with Raheem Islam and Kwabana Nixon on 860 AM WNLV, The Voice. No rap music. 
Hot 102, Van Halen, Huey Lewis, dancing like Mike, everybody used to do it. But then the coke came, rope chains, name on the map. Now everybody in the dope game and claim they can rap. These cats lying under oath, but your they claim is the facts. The people say they want the realness, I'm bringing it back. Welcome to the world of Quest Card Currency. You might spend your whole Friday night in emergency. Brothers turn a simple fist fight into a murder scene. I might be your favorite rapper. You might have never heard of me. From Juneteenth to Afrofest to the first day of school, you know the rules. Dress at your best. When it's hot, we love to chill on the steps. Cops love to arrest. Get your hands up or guns are pointed at your chest. 70s, 70s, 70s BC. I'm from the 70s BC, before crack. The days of pulling out switchblades before gats. Three quarter leathers with big feathers and straw hats. You looking back at old pictures like brothers wore that? <laughs> Balling out used to mean a stretch limousine. Now it's a Gulf Stream. We used to toss rocks at winos. Now it's at dope fiends. Ex classmates, hallways, back gates, drug addictions, bad breaks. I seen cats go from slinging hours under the lamppost to getting locked up and rocking shower sandals. All on the quest to push Lexuses and Lambos. Man, yo, we deeper in the street than manholes. Immune to the hurt, that's why brothers smirk on their mug shots. Cause we out here making long bread like sub shops. <laughs> Even your favorite movie got a part that you don't like about it, but this is real life. I can't fast forward it, so I write about it. Dang. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Hey, who was that spitting? Uh, that was me, uh, yeah, was Dane Raheem. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> That was right here. That was right here. <laughs> that was good, right here. That, that was, was your piece, right here. That was your piece. Well, let's give him I, a I, I tell you, I tell you what, that, it just ought to be <laughs> because that's beautiful, brother. Thank you, brother. Dave, Dave Smith. Appreciate it. All right, thanks. We appreciate that. Uh, so we got a caller that's been holding. Caller, we thank you for your patience. Do you have a question or a comment? I'm double dipping, I'm so I apologize off the top. This is Orlando again. And I I don't, well, I do know about the cipher. I don't like the skills like that, so I, I respect that. Appreciate so my it, question would be is this. If we are going to make this change, and, you know, Raheem, I want to also thank you for what you've done. You, I mean, man, you have took the city by storm on your you and your company and your passion for children and education and development, you have done some things that, man, I've been here, I'm 40, cuz, I've never seen somebody come in and kick some doors in like you have, and and, and still be respectful of what you, you, you're walking into, but you, you shook up the game, just to, be, just, just to let you know, you shook up the game to say, you, you're not gonna stand by and, you know, see kids, you know, and futures, and our country and our city just continue to, that way. So I want to give you some kudos for that. But what I want to get into is that how do we start making education more attractive than the street game? And I'll hang up and I'll listen to you and how the panel talks about that. Thank you. Well, I, I think, number one, I think what I, there's a fundamental belief that I have in people and that most people, and I haven't seen it, it hasn't, I've been in meeting with all kinds of people. I had also a 20 year experience in transportation and marine transportation where I was able to meet Nigerians, uh, Chinese, uh, Mexicans. I, I met almost every ethnic group, Irish, English, because they were all be on these ships. And so I had an opportunity to, to, for 20 years to deal with groups of people, and, and I didn't really know what I was going, what was happening, but it was forming a foundation for me even then, that everybody had the same. When, when that port docked, everybody had to run to those daggone phones and wanted to call home and find out how the family was doing. And in the transportation, in the marine transportation, the goal was that they do four months on, four months off. Four months on, four months off. So four months of the of, of of the of the cycle, they're on these ships, docking in different places around the world. And so again, when they get off, they want to know, you know, how is my children doing? How is my wife doing? How is my family doing? They have the same fundamental issues. There's no 
secret. Everybody has the same issue. So there's some fundamental things that are running through all people. That are saying. And and one of the things that that, that, that people want, most people want a peace. They want a quality life. They want, and that's why we adopted the concept called universal. Universally, mm -hmm. everybody has the very, very basic same goals and objectives. There's no different goals. If you're human, these are the goals that you have. And so, to your question, Orlando, that I think that in order for us to be able to assist in the education and make education a priority, we have to have contrast. We have to show the contrast. When we give the contrast, it awakens the mind, it awakens the spirit, and they won't be the same again. But So we have to do it in a structure in a way that we're getting not just, uh, there's a concept called the tipping point. It's just not mm. five or ten. If it's 30 people in, in there, we need 16. If it's, if, it's, if it's 50 people in there, we need 26. That's right. If, we, if it's 1,000 people in there, we need 501. We need more good happening than bad. And so our goal is mechanical. It's structural. So my goal and objective is to make sure that we can get this contrast so that children and young people can make a choice. I believe if they're given the options of good versus bad, mm -hmm. the 9.9% .9 of them, 99.9% .9 of them will choose good over bad. Yeah, you're going to have that 1% that's just absolutely cannot handle, and that's why we have prisons for them. <laughs> but the other 99.9%, .9 or we got medication for them. <laughs> the other 99.9%, .9 all they need to see is options. That's it. That's it. So that's my answer. Long, long answer, but that's my answer. Excellent answer. So I have a question, uh, Kwabanai. Yes, ma'am. To kind of tie all of this in together and get back to some of the work we're going to be doing, and also the series that Raheem has been. I don't know if you had a chance to read it. Um, use it in the if classroom. You, if you if you was one of the uh, people it. that said, "No, I didn't, I didn't no, read it." We use it in the classroom. <laughs> it's if you was in the classroom. So. Uh, we talked a little bit, Raheem wasn't here uh, that day that we talked, a little bit about why you decided to bring PU back mm -hmm. and that whole process and the journey. Mm -hmm. And because I know you won't be back on the radio before the show next week. Mm -hmm. And just briefly talk about that and why you're doing it, how it ties into the work that you and Mohib are doing right now, mm -hmm. how it ties into this whole black male mm -hmm. and the work that you're doing with um, Universal and in the community. Mm -hmm. Well, again, thank you guys for having us on here. Appreciate it. Again, as the caller said, Brother Ryan, you came in, you're taking me by storm, you know, and you've been a great asset to myself and we have, and several other brothers. And, um, well, one thing we used to say that if you drop a bomb, uh, me and Tom Cash had this conversation, they used to say, if you drop a bomb on Poetry Night on a Tuesday, you kill 80% of the black think tank in Milwaukee. And, we use PU as our platform. That's our platform that we can get whatever message out, uh, whatever uh, uh, event out, whatever uh, cultural uh, needs, that we can use that on that night. Because I used to say, if it's 300 people in here from 8 o'clock to midnight, and then probably to 1 o'clock in the morning, I know that's 300 people that are safe. There's no problems, there's no crime, etc. right in there. And how did it work? Well, parents would come to PU and someone would say, hey man, I think some of those poets need to come and talk to my son. Well, some, some children we would see would like, man, I saw you speak. Uh, I told my mother or father to come to poetry night. Uh, what else did it do? Whenever there was a social issue, we could always get that out at PU. We can always bring the family or the mother or whoever to Poetry Unplugged to get that out. Also, um, when we started the, uh, camp we started the campaign against violence, our volunteers came for Poetry Night, and the poets uh, at that time, our great relationship was us going into the schools, us going to the schools and educators coming to Poetry Night. So it was a great give and take and take and give. Um, why they bring it back? Because so many people were saying there was a major need for it. Uh, there was no, PU was the gathering place. No matter what you're going on, PU is the gathering place. Everybody is going to be at PU. Even if you didn't like poetry, when you walked around and saw what was going on in there and hearing the words and the and the power and the spirit and sometimes the testimony. Some people would call it the church 
without going to church. Right. You know, or as Vail called it, the church of the wild one time. They called it, P.U. was the church <laughs> of the wild because that's how I was in there. Um, and also with the death of Anita B. May she rest in peace, you know. Anita was uh, lost, slain, her life was taken by her husband. And this year I didn't do, we didn't do anything for her. So I wanted to make sure we uh, did something to keep her memory alive and also uh, Nori, you know, we lost Nori last year at this time. And we lost a good brother in Chicago, a phenomenal poet by the name of uh, Brother Mike, uh, died too young, uh, was doing great work in the community of Chicago, organizing and doing spoken word throughout the country. So, you know, a lot of the poets we knew was just like, man, you need to do one more night. You know, you need to do one more night. So just wanted to gather everybody back to come back for one night and do what we do. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about uh, you and Raheem met mm -hmm. and uh, came your big brother. Yes, sir. And uh, you guys connected and you've been, this is your home now, whether oh, yeah. you know it or not. Oh, yeah. Uh, the mic. You Enjoy it. You've been co-hosting. Uh, you and I have co-hosted together a few times. And now, by the way, I told him from day one, <laughs> I told Quabin you had a, you had a, you you have a, a unbelievable you and your partner have an unbelievable gift, Thank and you. so we have to get that out to the masses. And you know you can get in front of you. You just never know who's listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just never know, you have no idea. Some people they don't show up on the uh, on the uh, what is that the, uh, the measurement for uh, radar? Well, the measurement for radar, which is the. Um, Oh, they don't even do that. Well, well, but they, that they, they no more to yeah, talk about. I, I can't yeah. even remember uh, the, the measurement because you just never know. Right. Um, and you you hear Sounds uh, scary. you hear people, uh, and then you hear yes. people. You reach people you just never know. Mm -hmm. And so it's one thing to bring some people together and you have a you know an audience, but when it goes out to the airway. You know, you can reach the masses of the people, and so that's why I said from day one, um, I made that offer because uh, where I go, you go. That's fine. Right. So good. I want to share a little bit, and then I want you gentlemen to chime in on what I'm about to share. This is actually <laughs> we're gonna say it's part seven, and to this week you'll have the second part of part seven, which I guess technically will make it part eight. Um, of the black male, a targeted group. It's very clear to me that the black man has an invisible target on his back, and that target makes him subject to every negative issue facing humanity today. It's equally clear that this isn't a new phenomenon, but a historical fact that too many of our fathers inherit, inherited the psychological trauma, pain, of the enslavement of our ancestors, which is deeply buried in poverty and maintained through a flawed socialization process. The combination has contributed to a significantly high proportion of male abandonment within the black community. In many of our large cities, seven out of 10 children live in single female-headed households. Seven out of 10. This abandonment not only makes escape from poverty more problematic and nearly impossible, but the inherited trauma coupled with an extremely hostile environment, psychological, emotional, and physical, communicates black inferiority, which is trauma, to our black boys from the moment they are born mm. until the day they die. If one doesn't recognize this trauma and the impact it has on one's life and seek help, he will or must likely self-medicate. This means using drugs and or alcohol. This pent up anxiety will be addressed one way or another, either through self-medication or through a flawed socialization process that suppresses the trauma and denies use of any or all much needed coping skills. This type of trauma, which comes in so many forms, creates a higher propensity towards drug and alcohol addiction, self-medicating, and negative social behavior, and this cycle is repeated with every generation. I contend that too many of our black boys are absolutely defenseless against an environment 
that is so hostile towards them, which is further exacerbated by an unstable family and male socialization process that passes down the trauma, hurt, and legacy of the enslavement of our ancestors. I ask you, what does the average black child living at or near poverty see on a daily basis? He sees a heavy dose of pain and despair, trauma, and he is fed a heavy dose of projected psychological abuse. Collectively, this represents his environment. What messages are being communicated in the mind of that black child that will help shape his perception of himself and allow him to cope and excel. Forget about what we as parents tell them. What children really learn is what they see, hear, and feel from the external stimuli. Scientists have described a portion of the brain called the frontal cortex, which serves two key functions. One, calculate, quantify, compute, and cognitive and two, defend and protect the person from external negative and harmful images and messages that have the ability to compromise and weaken his good ego. We call this psychological immune system. This part of the brain can only be one, can only do one thing well. Too many of our black boys, in too many of our black boys, this function of the frontal cortex has to work over time defending against the many negative images which compromise their cognitive ability and their calculating skills, causing their calculating skills to suffer. The negative images and messages are a constant for our black boys. What say you gentlemen? Well that's that's Raheem spit. That's your piece. That's your piece. That's your piece. That was your piece. Yeah. That's your piece. That was a piece of his piece. Right. You know, um, <laughs> painting over all of that pain and trauma is the romanticizing of this violence and these images and what they think they need to aspire to and aspire to be. Um, and I work with the young people who work, and I've been doing that uh, work for many years. And I can't tell you how many young brothers have told me they, they're not going to school today because they don't have a haircut. It's that serious. You need to be picture perfect and video ready every time you step out of the house because those are the images that they see. And now the music reinforces that. I, I don't know what that means. Tell, 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 break that down a little bit more. What do you mean they won't go to school because they don't have a haircut? What yeah, does that mean? Meaning that they, they, don't look, they don't look picture perfect. They don't look like the images that are on TV because on TV everybody has brand new clothes. That's why they keep the tags on their hats and the tags on their clothes because they want to look like they just That's walked this. This just came out of the, I'm so fresh, I can't be no fresher. Got it. You I understand? never knew why they wore yeah. the tags. Show me. Yeah, to show popping you. my tags. Yeah, popping tags. Oh. You know what I mean? I, I go shopping every day to the point that, you know, I'm a, I'm a human mannequin. And those, those are the images I perpetuated, romanticized in the music. You know, you're, you're a bum. That's the worst thing to call a young man these days. That's, that's pull out a pistol, that's fight, that's we call him the block because you call me a bum. That's the worst thing you can be is somebody who doesn't have in their eyes because everybody has, you know, you can't look, you know, you can't look like you're going without at all. And, and really when you start looking at, um, I mean, that, that situation won't change because we're looking at poverty. You know, now people will say, oh, well, you know, you got, you got money for this, you got money for that. But people are making those choices. But the reality is they don't have enough money to, to live. They definitely don't have money to save. They don't, they, they, you know, so whether you're choosing, you know, you know, you, know, you make it, your income, I think the poverty level for a family of four, I think is roughly around eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 for a family of four annually. You know, you you making you making sacrifices. So, and you have some of these situations. You have five or six growing children. My mother used to say, "I'd rather I'd rather clothe them than feed them." Mm -hmm. I know, hey, man, you your know, mother uh, had it right. You know, she hit because, it on the head. Because, but so so something's going to give mm -hmm. in that situation. And so, when you describe that dynamic that's taking place, that's what we got to understand, so we can be, come up with some solutions the deal to address that so to give that young person defense because I remember in uh, Easter Christmas 
Mm. When I was growing up, I wouldn't come out of the house side because I didn't have nothing for Easter. And I used to go, and, I, and my father was so mean. I mean, he was mean. He was just silly. He wasn't really mean, but he would send me out, go to the store and get, you know, a Pepsi. You know, and I would go through the backyards and through the, just find a way to get because I did not want them to see me. And I didn't have on the suit. And everybody looked like they had on the suit. It was, it was, it was dressed down and, and it was so painful. You know, but, 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 you know, these kind of things. So this is not new. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. This phenomenon right. is not right. new. Right. It's just, it's just the morphed into right. something, right. Uh, something different. Right. But mm-hmm. the concept of not having and then your children teasing you because you don't have. Right. <laughs> you know, this is, this is, this is, the, this is like street. This, right. The thing goes on in the street. That's that. that okay, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. That, that part isn't new because we've all, you know, people have gone without from the beginning. Right. But the new part is the reinforcement through the music. Yeah, I say that mannequin. Th- what do you call that mannequin? mannequin. Yeah. What do you say, yeah, mannequin? mannequin? Yeah. No, the dress like, you said yeah. something mannequin. Yeah, you got to be mannequin fresh, I think I said. Ma- I yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the language. That's he was language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm like, damn. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is Chase, man. Look, damn, got language. Yeah, well, I, but I'm, I'm trying to catch up with you, but, but, yeah. but, but, so, so that's the kind of. That's the, the newer that's part. The, and it's like, you know, but this is what you're seeing, though. You're seeing generation after generation, and now it's getting worse, or it's getting more thicker. It's thicker. It's more prevalent. It's accepted now. You know what I mean? It's more accepted, like he said, that, like, for instance, I'm a big proponent for uniforms. I've always, I, I like when kids have to wear uniforms at school, because that killed all the nonsense. You know what I mean? The kids who right. didn't have everything, you know, uh, they can't compete with so and so mother who buys something every week, every right. day. Right. So even if they were doing well in school, look at their clothes. You know, that's a and that's a major part whether you're black or white. But especially for us to go to school and you don't have what everybody else has. Like you said, you went through the through every way not to. Hey, brother, every look. way not to be seen. No I remember. Question. When they sent me, and no question, you know, I it's still feel it hurt. Yeah, pop, it hurt. <laughs> pop, it hurt. Man, I remember. Uh, I used, to, I said, when I got old enough, I would never use food stamps. I, I remember saying that when I was a boy because I remember, uh, even though we all in the neighborhood had them, but you thought I thought I was the only one at that time that had them. And I remember they said, uh, everybody get up. You know, all of y'all to get free lunch. Go to the other side of the cafeteria. You know, mm. and. When you're getting up and you got to walk through people, that's a that's a, mm. a, a traumatized feeling as mm. a kid. Even though half the school got up, right. you're still in your mind right. like, wow. And I said, okay, this will never happen again. And that was then. There was some pride about, you understand what I mean? But now, it's okay. You know, people proudly will say, you know, man, I got that. I got that. Uh, what that? EBT. Yeah, I got that. You know, it's yeah. almost a pride yeah. thing. Yeah, so when you ask, you said, what do we inherit? Like, we've inherited our father's, father's, father's pain. Right. We've inherited our, our mother's conditions. We've inherited it. And they say the best way to, a black man can be a leader. They say the best way to break a black man is to break him when he's a child. Because if you carry that trauma with you and never fix it, the world is, everybody owe you something. Oh, yeah. Everybody owe you something. So I'd say the first thing is, again, is the restore is the very first thing is everybody need a model everybody need a model to be if you're going to be a man you got to have a model when i was a little boy i was looking okay where is it at my uncle had left uh 16 boys in the circle we hustling wilding two us 16 black boys in the circle only two people got fathers at home and that was my father that was my stepfather right and my guy uh that was his father but i'm just saying it was only two of us so it's really like a Lord of the Flies, like who do you follow? But And then one man comes along and you say, okay, this is what I want to see. So I didn't know what a writer was, but when the guy came to the school and he's like, I wrote this book, and I was sitting there like, okay, how do you do it? I, it, it wasn't that I, need, I, I, didn't, I didn't know what a writer did, but I had never seen one. But when I saw him, I was like, okay. And the other thing is to go back and show them it's possible. I'm just a believer in that. When I saw Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thomas, 
I didn't see, I saw him every day when I was growing up playing basketball, but what I was important to me is what I saw an interview and after he wrote his book, he said his brother got shot. I remember his brother getting shot. I remember he said somebody put a gun to his head and he said uh, they were poor. And I did a checklist. I was like, uh, my father got shot, my father got killed, uh, we were poor, and his brother was in the penal system. I was like, if he did it, I can do it. I went through a full checklist, and I think if we say how do we stop it, that's one of the ways. A model, you know. I didn't, you know. It's, how do you let? Most boys don't know how to tie ties, right? So even if you say get dressed, you've never seen. It. So that's one. That's one example. There's no man in the house when you don't know how to tie a tie. I just told reveal on the station. I just turned, learned to tie a tie last week. I mean, about, uh, about three months ago. I'm, I'm, so what you doing, do clip on? Yeah, my uh, I'm gonna go see Sean. I'm gonna go see Sean. Sean, hook me up. Sean, hook me wow. up. Wow! I was wow. determined, just like, okay. I just learned about two years. Ago. I learned two years you ago. You know, well, you know, but you, you really, you really uh, uh, exposed a couple things that I write about in this situation, mm -hmm. which is this phenomenon of uh, being a young boy being in environments where there are no men. Mm -hmm. And that's just one of the symptoms. But another thing that I think that we start to see happen is the emasculating of the black man. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's common. It is a standard. It's, it's something that is accepted. And you're right. But it was two things that you want to do that uh, you talked about. Um, um, you said uh, the child, the, uh, the black boy. Uh, you want to you you uh, break up the... Uh, destroy the black family, mm -hmm. uh, and there's there's b biblical descriptions where they talked about when the, the the enemies would come in and kill all of the the boys, uh, the baby boys. So they destroy the future. Mm -hmm. So, but the other way is through the woman. Mm -hmm. So because the woman right now, who right now who fundamentally believes that they can raise a boy. Is 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 has been bamboozled, mm -hmm. and then when the man does come in an environment, he is the hostile. You know, he says, "Oh, for example, you gotta do X, Y, and Z. I ain't doing that." <laughs> right. You know, because you know that's hard. That feels hard to do, and I'm coming from a soft perspective. But that boy doesn't need nothing soft. That boy mm. needs something hard, Training. firm, right out strong. The door. Training. Right. And a woman can't do that for a boy. And so when a, so a woman will go from one partner to another partner to another partner to another partner and creating this environment where, where there's no men because, you know, there might have been a man in one of them and, and couldn't handle it because 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 certain things he's not going to accept. And see, the thing of it is, is that a man has to be taught, a boy has to be taught how to go out and conquer. And we get it in in just the, the craziest ways. We might fight each other mm -hmm. till we 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 can't fight no longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We might want to play basketball till we can't. <laughs> Play anymore. That's right. We That's might right. want to play checkers now, and and uh, now now they do video games, but I don't know nothing about that. But but clearly, mm -hmm. competition is it's, embedded in right. everything that we do. That's right. Bust until you are bleeding. Who gonna quit first? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Whoever right. quit first. Right. So what we're learning is how to conquer. We're learning how to go out and conquer to be leaders, and we're learning how to. To, to to control and own your environment where that's not going to come from, you know, you, 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 you come home and you, you've been beating, your father will say, go back out there <laughs> and go and, 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 and you don't come back here right. to you, you. So it's not so much this winning or losing, it's not falling down, mm -hmm. getting back up, mm -hmm. getting back up, getting knocked down, getting back up again, getting knocked down, getting back up again, because it's in that process you learn how to have, you become a conqueror, you become a leader. A woman cannot teach a boy that. Nope. It's the rights. Right? It's just impossible. It, it's the rights. You know, I remember my uncle, uh, I got into a fight when I come back in the house. I was, my uncle said, man, he got you. 
I was like, well, you got to come out there and help me. He's like, I want to see if you can take it a little bit. Mm. Right. You know, now you go back out, you know, he's, now, okay, here we go. You want right. to do this, you do that, right? right? But even those things in the neighborhood was a little rites of a passage. Sure. There was some fights as a young boy you were going to have. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, as we were stating, I think it's really important, as you, over at the school, you guys have the rites of passage program. Because, again, young men are learning rights. They just, a great example, if you ever, remember the movie Baby Boy, if you remember the movie, he learned all the rites of passage. They just were the wrong rites of passage. Yeah. He had the idea of, I want to be. He just, you know, and it's a hurting feeling, even as I speak now, when you are a young boy and you like, how am I supposed to do this? Like, I was, I remember being 17, like, okay, how is it supposed to be? Am I, how, you know, do I fight? No, I don't fight. My, I, my grandmother sent me to California and I was wilding out real bad in Chicago in my young, at 13. I was a knucklehead, right? The night before she sent me to California, I almost got killed. You know, I got to shoot out, went up there. I went to start the fight. Mm. But it had to be a major thing for her and my mother. They sent me to California to live with my uncle. That's, that's say my, that, that manhood training. My uncle took me from boyhood to manhood in that time. Because I remember I raised up in him like, you ain't my daddy. Mm. I'm a man. And I remember he showed me mm. in the house <laughs> at that moment in time. I mean, literally, who is the man? He said, no problem, you are a man, but you're about to be whooped like a boy. And I remember him showing me who's the man. But I, you understand what I mean? Absolutely. There was something needed. I watched how my uncle drank coffee. I watched how he talked to other men. I watched him and his guys sit around, watch the game, drink beers. E eventually, I copied that. But mm -hmm. you, we all need a model sure. to do it. If not, you know, you do whatever well, you see. Well, you're going to look at, um, you're going to be called the feminization of our boys. Oh, exactly. And you're going to say where are now our boys are a bunch of wimps because right. they're soft. That's right. And they don't have any get up. They don't have any energy about it. They don't have how to be able to, you no know, grit. They don't have any ability to fight because they've been around a bunch of softness all of their life. Right. And they haven't seen it. And it's not so much that this is a bad thing for women, but mm -hmm. that's what women's going to do. The bottom line is that when you look at the history of our community, our people in this country, and you see when we went from, in America, they went from trying to break a slave to making a slave, they did it two ways. One, they did it in emasculating the black man in front of the black woman. And they did it in a number of ways. Not only did they destroy any sense of his ability to be a leader, any, I mean, you take it, they destroyed it. The second thing they did was um, put her in situations where he couldn't protect her. So he, she would be raped, literally be, be used. So you, this is your wife, yet the slave master is raping her right in front of you. So make sure you right there, it's this stuff, or when I'm hanging and lynching this joker, I'm going to pull him up. I'm going to do everything I could possibly do. And I want you and your children to see it. Mm -hmm. That was the, the emasculating of the concept of black leadership. But here's the, the most vicious way. They did it. They did it. And this is when they did it, when they said, here's what we're going to do. If you want the outcome of your children, of your son, to be this, then this is what you need to do. So you get the biggest, burliest black man that you can say, this joker is a giant, but yet he acts like a wimp. Mm -hmm. He's as timid as they come. Mm -hmm. Because his mother has made him to be timid, has trained him to be timid. And that is the legacy of slavery that we have. Not so much some of the things that's going on, it's these attitudes, these concepts about leadership, these concepts about manhood, this concept about being a black man and a black relationship of a black man and a black boy. If you are going to destroy a people, you destroy its men. That's it. That's why I talked about it. I can't stop talking about the black male, a target group. There is no group on the history and not even in this world today that has a bigger target on his back than the black man. Jeez. To keep the black man in a position, out of position, so he's unable to take the rightful position as a leader. And many times his black woman is, is, a, is, a, is a culprit to it, just like in slavery. So the biggest issue we're going to have to deal with is we're going to have to create places where our next steps is we're going to have to have ways we can have an airing, mm -hmm. a dis open discussion between our women and our men 
and come to some compromise of things of how we're going to roll out, how are we going to cre keep our marriages, how are we going to work with each other, how are we going to deal with each other, how are we going to begin to regain the trust in each other that's been destroyed. Because it's natural in us to be want to fight. As black men, we want to fight. You want somebody who's not going to abandon you, who's not going to leave you on a moment's notice. Just like you were left when you was a child. When you was abandoned as a child, you grow up, you're the same baby. You're the same baby. And the woman has other issues as well. She has issues and rights as well. She going through challenges herself. So we're going to have to come together as a community. This is some heavy stuff, brothers and oh, sisters. God, absolutely. But we, got, we are up for the challenge. Yes, we are great people. Mm -hmm. We are mighty people. But our might is not in our ability to talk about how mighty we are. Mm -hmm. Our might is in our ability to get it done. Come on, bro. Mm -hmm. That's where our might is. To think this thing through and not be afraid of the consequences. Mm -hmm. We cannot be afraid. We cannot be fearful of what we don't know. What's going to lie there waiting for us when we get out there? Just got to get out there. That is the conqueror spirit. That is the African conqueror spirit. We know it's something lying out there waiting for us. But guess what? I'm ready. I'm prepared. And I'm going to beat it. I'm going to win. I won in blackjack. I won in tops. I won in, in basketball. I won in. I won in everything that I done. I won in ba uh, body boxing. I won in slap boxing. I won in track. I won in football. I won in everything. And if I didn't win, I had the attitude of being a winner. I knew what winning looks like. And that's what we have to do as a community. And that's where the black man has to get in his rightful position and take ownership of the problem and be a leader for his community. And even in an environment where the leadership is being constantly, you look at today, you see these, these constant role models where they, black leaders are just drugged down the street. Now, I'm not a Bill Cosby guy. I know Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. And I know some good things and some bad things. But guess what? That's all people. But the sum of this stuff is just way over the board. Mm -hmm. Way over the top. Because, again, it's a lynching. Mm -hmm. Because Lovely. we don't want to see... The media does not want to see, the, the, this community does not want to, this society would not see a real black man. Right. Wow. Well, gentlemen, well, teach. that was powerful. Teach. And I think we're going to have to continue this black male panel next Friday. I'm down. You down? <laughs> yes, I am down. down. You down? Right hand right down the spit. You be in Chicago. <laughs> you can call in. I Chicago. You can call in. I'll see if I can call in. I gotta oh. go see Mama, Mama oh. May. She said, yeah, you gotta come home. Okay. You ain't been on. So I gotta Ask Mama May if you can use the phone Let me see. while you're there. But if, 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 this, if even if you're not, don't 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 put no pressure on you. The bottom line I'm is that we right. will we will we 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 would end this to win us. And so the question for us has got to be, you know, who feels the same way? That's right. And, that, and you know, thank God, you know, who feels the same way is my main man, Mr. Jones. He yes. feels the same way. He keep pushing me out here. So this this brother is, is you think I'm gangster. This brother is real gangster. <laughs> we know. You know, and he is serious. He O O G. <laughs> yeah, Tri yeah. Triple O G. Tri triple O G. Triple, 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 triple. O G Bobby Jones. Yeah. So so the bottom line is that. So that's what that's what the way it's supposed to be in our community. Our elders are supposed to have the rightful seat as the leaders, as the moral compass, as the as the, the those who can provide the wisdom and leadership, and then get us to do it. That's why I said to you, when I seen you, you got a spot with me, because I need you. I can't replace the the years between the differential between me and you. I can replace it if I empower you. Mm. Mm. That's how I can. That's how I can replace it. If I can empower you, I can check out here and, and have nothing to worry about. I know that we we on the right track. Amen. We will be back next Friday, same time, same station. You're listening to Universally Speaking with Raheem Islam on 8:60 a.m. The Voice. Until next week. Peace. Peace.